Hello artist, welcome to another video. Today it's one of my favorites, monthly favorites, because I feel like in these videos I can show you what I actually use, what I actually love, which is so much better than first impressions or a review. So let's get into it. These are Japanese watercolors and this in particular is mostly, I have messed around a little bit with these sets, so I can't guarantee that every single color is actually in the set, but this is the botanical set of these particular Japanese watercolors. They are from Choosing Keeping, Keeping Choosing, Choosing Keeping from the UK. And then this is the autumn set and it has this beautiful, beautiful packaging, but I actually keep these open like this so I can see the colors. And so if you're not familiar with these, these are Japanese watercolors and the difference is between Japanese watercolors and traditional Western colors, which is probably what you're mostly used to, is first of all the presentation. These come in these ginormous pans and for comparison let me show you what a regular like traditional western half pan looks like that's that and full pan so this is kind of the size of like three full pans and i don't know four five six half pans so these are ginormous and that is actually my one issue with them is that they take a lot of real estate and all of these sets that I have seen and this one is a super super old Kuretaki set that I probably have now for seven eight years and my daughter got into it and yeah these are not great to give to your small kids because they're very intense and they'll just make a huge mess so don't make the mistake that I made. Anyway, these sets usually come in these like beautiful cardboard boxes without a mixing tray. The reality is that I actually don't really mix these. I use these as gouache and I feel like the formulation of them is how I wish gouache was when it's dry. Gouache paint, I feel, is best used straight from the tube, but I hate that. I hate having to squeeze out paint. And so I actually have uh, a palette with squeezed out gouache paints that I keep very, very hydrated. And still you can see how it like crumbles. See? This is, this is kind of what happens. So gouache, I feel, is really not meant to be used this way, but that's the only way that I like to use it. And so the greatness of the Japanese watercolors is that I feel like they are exactly how I want gouache to be. And hey everyone, future editing Irit interrupting the video. I had a lot of footage with hand gestures and differences between gouache and watercolor and Japanese watercolors and I feel this is unnecessary for this particular video. If you're interested in that topic then leave me a comment below but for now I just want to tell you why I love these so let's get on with the favorites. What I love about these are the ease of use. I tend to use these now straight from the pan as kind of an accompanying medium to my watercolor. So I don't necessarily feel I need to have that mixing tray. And if I do, then I just use the one in my watercolor palette or the other gouache palette that I showed you. But I have just been loving these and they do take up a lot of real estate. But the formulation is beautiful. These are so creamy and lovely and I recommend using these with a flat brush. It's so so lovely. You can very easily get these to be quite intense and and they will not ever 
really crumble. They sometimes crack a little bit. As I said, these, I've had these for seven years at least, I think. And they do have, like, some of them have some cracks in them, but they never fall off. They are just really perfectly formulated. I've been really enjoying these. And I have to say that's always a fun thing for me because I've had these sets for like these two sets for a few years now. Um, this one, what I didn't like about it was kind of the color selection. There's just like a lot of primary and secondary colors that don't really speak to me. So this is not the original set. I moved around some paints. These are the swatches of the original set. It's a, it's a good option for a basic set. Again, this is this thing is like huge and you don't get a mixing tray, so you really need a lot of space to be able to use it, but the quality is fantastic. And if you understand the differences between um, traditional Western watercolors and the, the Japanese paint, then you, know, you can make your own informed decision. I have no idea what the pigments are. It doesn't really say that. Um, the information in the back is in Japanese and you just have like the numbers. These are not made by the same manufacturer as far as I can understand. These are Kuretake. These are something else, both made in Japan. Same pants. So I have done some switcheroos to create palettes that speak to me more. Um, but there's no like pigment information. I can only speculate with certain colors that seem familiar to me, like ultramarine blue or something. Um, but I've been loving these and just very happy to get good use out of them. These are not cheap, but I think for what you get, these are so beautiful, so high quality. I have, this is the botanical set, again, with some minor adjustments, and this is the fall set. And I'll show you the colors. Most of them kind of look like they look in the pan, but then some, the, the ones that are more transparent, um, don't. So here is the botanical set, the swatches. You can see there are like a couple, like these two blues, I would say. One is redundant. I think they came in the original set. I have to look. As I said, I made some um, swat switches, but the... Violets here are beautiful, the pinks. And then this is the autumn set. This color doesn't come in the set. I made a switch because the yellow, uh, this yellow comes in both sets. So I switched it for a warmer yellow from the Kuritaki set, that the one that I've had for ages, because the pans are the same, you can switch them around. And then this color ha comes in both sets and also this one, but uh, I switched it in this set, so don't be. Um, deceived by this circle. So there are, I think, three colors that come in both sets. And then if you look at the Choosing Keeping website, you can see they have more beautiful, beautiful sets um, with a few colors that overlap between sets, but not too many. And then if you go to Amazon, or I think probably if you're in the US, probably in most of your craft stores, you can probably find the Kuritaki sets. And they have now actually a new set on Amazon, which is called Art Nouveau. It's not that new. This is how this one looks, the Kuretake ones. And the Art Nouveau has like some muted colors. I actually ordered it because I was very curious and I want to share it with you and swatch it and everything. So when I get that, I'll show you. But I've been loving these. I usually use them alongside my watercolors because there are some colors in my watercolor palette that I just can't live without. Mostly the darks and the greens. Um, that's where I feel like all my gouache paints and Japanese watercolors pale in comparison. So this is the watercolor update. My regular watercolor palette that has been with me for years and years, I use it almost every day and I love it. My gouache palette is... I feel like it has some limitations. Um, the format is kind of working for me. Uh, the colors are nice. But again, I kind of, there are some pinks that I don't have in the Japanese watercolors. But, and a few colors because this is a very, very curated 
palette to my preferences. So, but it's, every time I paint with it, I feel like I have to bring in watercolors because I don't have darks that speak to me. And these, except for the Cascade Green from Daniel Smith, um, I wish they made gouache versions of all of their separating and granulating watercolors. Maybe they will in the future, but besides that, I just, I miss that beautiful granulation and separation. And so I'm enjoying this, but I don't feel like I can just use that. So every time I use it, I end up bringing more like my watercolors at least, and then probably the Japanese watercolors. So that's where I'm a little bit mm, like, I like when I have just less, less pro palettes and products and things taking up space. Uh, a few honorary mentions, my Neo Color ones with a few additions of Neo Color 2 in colors that don't come in the Neo Color 1 range. Uh, I wish they rectified it. I wish they made uh, the range uh, of the colors identical, but I think the Neo Colors 1 are a lot less popular. People love the Neo Color 2. I'm a fan of the 1. I just love the fact that they're not water soluble, but it seems I'm on my own there. So yeah, that's it. I use these every time I paint with watercolors and also with acrylics. These are one of the most loved, most used, all time favorite of mine. You can buy these open stock. If you haven't tried any of the Caran d'Ache, I would recommend either get a small basic set. Uh, I know they have this huge set that is beautiful. I've seen it so many times, every time I see it, I'm like, this is so, so beautiful, but I have the colors that I like and I'm resisting. So don't do the mistakes that I tend to do. In this case, I actually didn't do it. Gather some colors you love in open stock or buy a small set, see if you like the medium and then add. That's the great thing about using artist grade, high quality supplies that many times you can find things open stock and you can curate exactly the colors that you love. So these are all time favorites. Newcomers from the last year are the Molotow uh, markers. I have a video dedicated to these. I think this is hands down the best acrylic marker I have tried. I've had the Posca, I know the Posca are super, super popular. I've had a few of these for years and I never use them as much as I use the Molotow. Um, these I feel are more reliable and the color range is great. So that's just my experience, but the, the fact is that I use these all the time and in all the years that I've had my Posca and some Liquitex, I never use them as much. The next item I want to show you is this particular color. This is Royal Blue from Flash Paints. I've talked about these many, many times on my channel. This is vinyl paint, which basically is functions as a matte acrylic paint. And I just love this color. This is basically ultramarine blue with white. So it's a convenience color, but I love it. I love it straight out of the tube. It's so beautiful. I, I will, repurchase, replenish, uh, probably in a tube because the jars are not the easiest to use, even though I love the concept. But if you like these kinds of colors, I absolutely love, love, love this one. And yeah, went through a whole jar of it, which is rare in my world. And then another all-time favorite, I think I have another tube or two. <laughs> This is Luminous Rose by Holbein. This is their regular acrylic paint. However, for some reason, their luminous paints are also matte, which is my current preferred finish for acrylic paint. I like the look of it and I like being able to go on top with pencils and pens. So this color, it's like my perfect pink, very, very bluish pink. And I absolutely love it. And I go through a lot of it and I think it is beautiful. So still a favorite, going strong. Now, when it comes to pencils, again, I have my go-tos formula-wise. I think my top two all-time faves are the Derwent drawing pencils. 
These are the most creamy, beautiful, lovely pencils. And the black is great. If you want to try them, just get the black. See how you like it. But they have some pretty colors. This one I really like. This is Mars Violet. You can see it's just like this muted violet. And then this color is another favorite, the yellow ochre. Which is just actually a very, very creamy yellow. It has a little bit of earthiness to it. So I love the formula. The problem with these is maybe it's not a problem for some people, but it's a problem for me. They have a very limited color range. These are the colors that they come in. So if you love a muted color palette, oh, this one is another good one. This is called Green Shadow. I think you can find these also open stock. So this is just like this grayish mid-tone green. As I said, the, the formula I think is perfection but the color range needs to be like so, so, so much bigger. And that's where Prismacolors come. There are like a ton of videos that you can find about how the quality has gone down and they break all the time. And yes, they sometimes break, but they are creamy. They are vibrant and pigmented and the color range is unmatched from what I have seen. Correct me if you think I'm wrong. I've had the, the largest set that I could find. I got that years and years ago and I absolutely love them. And every time I try to like switch around and see what else, I just end up going back to their colors. They just have the most beautiful range and especially all the colors that I love, like the tertiary colors, you know, the violets, the turquoises. Nobody can compare. You can see, like, these are just my colors and I can't find these in any other range with this creaminess and the formulation is just perfect. This one is actually from Derwent. This is Light Fast Magenta. Yes, it's okay, but it's just, you know, it's not as lively as the Prisma colors. I just love them. Love, love, love the colors. Whoever formulated the colors there in their range is a genius. And other brands just didn't get it. Didn't get it so, so right. So I wanted to mention that. And then also these, I keep coming back to these. These are the Mars Lumograph Black from Stedler. They are regular pencils, regular lead pencils. These are not water soluble, but they are black. So if you love working with pencils, but you want a black one and not that silvery gray one, try the Mars Lumograph Black. They have a set that is half the regular ones and half black. My favorite is the 6B. Uh, I love soft pencils, as you probably figured out. And this one is just lovely. And I think that is it for this month. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you feel inspired to try some uh, products or if you have these in your stash to use them. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you very soon in another video. Take care, bye-bye.